from the top of West Mountain in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Good morning, everybody. This is 94.3 FM, the talk. Uh, this is Sanity Check. I am Libertarian Lou. Tea Party Mike is on the phone. And as always, if you wish to blow off a little steam, if you want to start your weekend off right, the number here is 888-577-4487. That number is 888-577-4487. Good morning, Michael. Morning, Lou. It's a beautiful day here in Texas, and you know there's there's always some form of encouragement we can get through life here. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and there there is, and I think we have to look for those encouragements. And and today, I just want to tell the the folks how the system is supposed to work, and how why certain parts of the country are doing so well, and why other parts of the country are not. Now, for example, here in Texas, we have a county really close to where I live, which is the fastest growing county in the nation. And why is that? It's because of low taxes and low regulations breeds opportunity. And people are coming here for opportunity. We had one county here that within a year grew almost 38,000 people. That's almost the size of Wilkes-Barre. Sure is. It, sure is. it really is. And, you know, I talked to a young man here who was putting in our alarm system, and he he legally immigrated from Mexico, and what was the reason? Oh, I'm looking for opportunity. He's yeah. in California. Why'd you move here? I'm looking for opportunity, and, and that's the the theme here. I'm looking for opportunity. Why Texas? Because there is opportunity because of the free marketplace, though not perfect, though not completely intact. It's certainly more so than you were seeing in lots of lots of uh, states throughout the Northeast Lou. So I think it's important for our listeners to realize how impactful it is for our economy, for our nation, when there is really the system in place, again, low taxes, low regulations, to make business and the economy thrive, Lou. Well, you got that right, Michael. And that, that, you know, that's where I really wanted to start off with today. And, and, and you mentioned folks. Do you remember? It just makes me laugh a little bit. Uh, for those folks who there might be just joining us, and 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 certainly we do know that uh, more and more people are listening to us around the country for some of the issues that we've been bringing to the forefront here. But I remember when we were down in Philadelphia, we were we were told, yeah. "Don't use those words, folks." Remember, and, but oh, yeah. but that but that's who we are, Michael. We we've never. Yes, <laughs> yep. So if we're offending anybody, uh, we apologize. But I I, I have. I'm pretty sure we're not offending too many people, and uh, yeah. but but that all being said, Michael, I, I'm looking at some of the stuff that we have done in the past, and some of the things that 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 we've talked about, and I'm, I'm looking at the Federal Reserve and ballot access, and and uh, certainly fully informed jury information, and DOMA, Defense of Marriage Act, and NDAA, and Department of Education. I'm going right down my list, and 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 for those folks who do not. Uh, or, or just tuning in. I usually have a book here, as you know, Mike, and uh, just in case we need to uh, do any uh, quick research. But we've talked about an awful lot of issues, and and when we look at all those issues, I was uh, I, I had the opportunity to listen to the David Madeira show. I, I think it was yesterday, or or maybe it was Thursday, <clears throat> and uh, he had uh, a Lou Burletta on. And uh, and and Mr. Barletter is uh, had introduced a bill about volunteer fire firemen uh, being able to opt out of the mandate, uh, forcing them to uh, buy Obamacare, um, and it was a bill that was overwhelmingly passed. As a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, over 400 congressmen and women uh, voted, and it was unanimous. Even Nancy Pelosi. Even even Nancy Pelosi voted on this bill, and then it was sent over to the Senate, and it got because well, she wanted to see what was in it. That's how she had to vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy! But you're right, and 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 that and that's part of where I'm heading with all of this, is mm-hmm. and then it was sent over to the Senate, and it was bastardized totally. And now it's being sent back, and I I, I was listening to the news uh, yesterday and. And I'm listening to how they're spinning it, that now the Republicans don't care about the unemployment because that's what that's what Harry Reid did. Uh, he had he had changed the bill. They put all this language in there. And the system is really broken. It really is. And and we could come on week after week, month after month, just like so many of the radio shows and, and, and certainly uh, uh, 
uh, I, I do encourage people to listen to David's show. He always has some great information on there, and, and that's on, on 94.3 FM, the talker here each and every week, uh, each and every, yeah, each and every week, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9. And just listening to that, and after it was over, I'm, I'm saying to myself, that's why we've started what we've started. I mean, we could complain. We could keep talking about all these issues. But at the end of the day, how do we change it? You know, Michael, you and me have talked at length and certainly on this show that I, I feel as though that there's always hope for the United States for, for two reasons. One is, is that we have a constitution, even though it's being trashed in, in many ways. And and myself and, and certainly you, uh, uh, you know, we've, we've been able to travel to the United States, see what it's about. Uh, for, my, for me, I think I've traveled all the byways. And we are awash in energy. We are awash with people around the country that are diverse, bring all different kinds of, you know, talents to this country. And I think that's that's what that's how we're going to save this and, and how why we're going to continue to improve. But we have to try to come up with a way to fix this broken system. And I and and we've said this before. I don't think anything changes until we have a free and independent press and free and equal elections. You, you know, you, Lou, you're right, and it's very interesting. We talked just prior to the show, and we we're talking about government and things. And you know, I just had to look up the definition, and it's it's not the definition of government that we see in the United States, but it says government: the offices, agencies, and people who control a nation, state, or city by making laws. And, you know, here, here in America, it's not the government that controls. It's the people that controls. But the problem is you, you're talking about a system that is broken, Lou, simply because they've got it backwards. Our Constitution tells us that the people, we the people, have control over this nation, not the legislators. But when you look at people like Harry Reid, and, and, and I'm not saying that the Republican Party is not guilty of this also, because they are, it, it's all about them. It's all about the political process. It's all about keeping their party, not the nation, on top. And, and this is why the independent press is so critical. And, and I'm actually, uh, it's embarrassing to see the top press to even call themselves press, because the whole intent of having a free press is to expose the corruptions and that that government so easily gets into. And yet we just have you're right, Lou. The press is really part of the problem because they're not exposing anything. As a matter of fact, they're uplifting the corruption rule. It is, and, and we keep coming back to that, and and that's why we, you know, I, I, I want to stay on this topic. And how do we get this changed? Because, you know, once again, I'm 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 listening to the news this week and and watching the spin and and how MSNBC is spinning stuff and how Fox News is spinning stuff. I, I listened to uh, Senator Stabenow from Michigan. And she's up there, and, and, and this was a quote. Uh, l l let me see what, what, what exactly. She, she was talking about how the Republicans have rigged the election process. And they have. The Republicans mm -hmm. have. And yet, um, I'm, I, I wind up calling Senator Stabenow's office, and I didn't get any response back. There's a surprise. But right. my question to, to her was, or to her staff was, you know, you're being hypocritical here. I mean, the, the, the process has been rigged. Once again, and, and we also want to let our listeners know, and especially people that might be just tuning in, feel free to call in on any subject. Uh, this, this is, and I like to say now, the, the fastest show, fastest hour in radio. So feel free to call in. You're not going to break off our train of thought, Michael, because our train no. of thought goes all over the place. And that number is 888-577-4487. And we will adjust, uh, believe me. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll snap back to what we were talking about. And if we can't snap back, we'll snap back next week and talk, finish what we were talking about. But that all being said, you know, just listen to this, and it's so hypocritical, and, and yet the news just lets this go by. And, 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 and the thing that jumped out at me was, obviously, you know, her complaining that the system is rigged goes back to that phony 
Presidential Debate Commission, who we've been trying to educate more and more people on. And certainly I know Gary Johnson, that's been on their forefront. They're taking this to court. And, and and that's another way. So it's just not us, Mike. But as more and more people start talking about this, when we talk about a presidential debate commission that's designed to make sure that there's only two candidates on the ballot, I think that's legitimate. And that's a rigged system. That, that is a rigged system. And, and, and I love when a party, whether it's the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, complains of the other party <laughs> doing yeah. such. And yet they're unwilling to do anything about it. You know, you, you have a little snippet here and there of this particular congressperson saying how the Republicans have rigged it. But the Democratic Party has also advanced their agendas through the very same system, though. So, so there is no intention to get anything fixed here because of the fact that the, the two parties really have controlled things for decades, if not a century or more. And, and really take great candidates, like I, I believe when Gary Johnson was running for president, that doesn't even allow him to get on the stage and allow the American people to see what other choices there are out there. Because really, Lou, we've been limited on our choices. The established Democrats pick their candidate, and the established Republicans pick their candidate. We saw it in Pennsylvania, Lou, when um, I believe we were running for senators when the established Republicans in Pennsylvania picked a candidate that was probably as far left as Nancy Pelosi was as their candidate, instead of having folks like uh, Sam Moore, who's a great candidate, Mark Scaringi, great candidate. So really, it, and again, I am a registered Republican, Lou, as you know, but anybody listening out there, they think the Republican Party is the answer to our problems or not. The ability to have a press who's going to challenge them on a regular basis and really keep them honest is what we're looking for. And, and that is going to be one of the answers, and certainly we encourage people to, to check us out. Uh, you could go to – I think the easiest way sometimes, and I always say, you could go to Muckraker News, which we're certainly – uh, now advancing that that is a new site that we're looking at even international we're, we're starting to bring on international writers Mike it, we really have some really really cool stuff going on but certainly just Google Independent Gazette Scranton Independent Gazette Wilkes-Barre Independent Gazette the uh, Pocono Independent Gazette uh, we're even getting more uh, again involved down in Trenton so you could always just look there and see what we're doing we certainly encourage folks to to do that that that's for sure but when we're looking at this broke system, it, it's it's the party. It, it's it's not it, it's the system itself. So we're always looking for solutions, and obviously part of those solutions is free and independent, you know, uh, press and 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 certainly free and equal elections. But also, I, I'm getting a lot of reports of, of of a number of individuals looking to run as independents, which I believe is a wonderful way. Of starting to change the system. I, if, if you're a free uh, free market guy, and I know you are, and certainly we, I am, I, I look for competition in the marketplace to to bring down price, to keep corruption out, to to give us a better product, and and that's why I'm so up on having a, a competition within our political atmosphere also because I, it, it, the same thing will happen, and then when we look at th these other things that are happening when they pass these bills. And and when we look at the system in general, you know, we look at how how few people have so much power, whether it's Harry Reid, whether it's Smucker being the, you know, the chair of, 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 of uh, committee, government committee here, right here in, in Pennsylvania. We've talked about that and how they hold up, how they hold up certain bills because they know it won't. It, it's not about advancing liberty. What it's really about is advancing their parties. And that's where the breakdown comes from. And then when we look at one bill, one subject, uh, 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 certainly something that's been brought up by Congressman Marino here. I mean, that, uh, you know, uh, so we have to start looking at solutions. And, and that's one of the reasons I read all those things that we talked about here, whether <laughs> Federal Reserve, Jur NDAA, there is so many things that are wrong. But the only way it changes is by electing people or legislators that are willing to buck the system that say, you know what, I don't care about your stupid committee. I'm here to represent the people. And, 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 and the, once again, that changes by people having the ability to get on the ballot and then a news organization 
and we're still small but growing. But e- but they have then the ability to get in the news. We're a little unique up here in Pennsylvania, in Northeast Pennsylvania, because I, I do believe that some of the candidates here have an opportunity or a little bit more of an opportunity than other other places around the country to actually get in the news. And, and, and I, I'll continue to encourage that. Certainly 94.3 FM, the talker, ha, is open to everybody coming on, which is fantastic. That is not the case throughout the country. Certainly the major news is not like that, Michael. And and that's something that we had talked about when we were down in Philadelphia and and, and, and we've talked about quite quite often. You, you're right, Lou. And the, and the thoughts of well, first of all, that's that way in Pennsylvania because of the independent that little no, I'm from, but, but it's but when I look at at really folks who have been in the Republican Party for years who have become so frustrated, Lou, and you know this for a fact that they're changing their status to independent because they realize they they have to play the game. If you know, I I. I no, and this happened to me personally that, you know, I was basically said, you know, if you do this, I could see a great political career for you. Right. But, Lou, I was, un- I was unwilling to change my principles because if, unless I was willing to do that, the future was not, was not going to be a positive one to run for office locally anyway within, within Pennsylvania unless I was willing to support things that I was not – willing in the past to support. So so I think we're starting to see people who are saying, you know what, my principles are a lot more important than what the party thinks, and I'm going to run as an independent. And, and I can just envision, you know, half the House being sort of independent. Now how do the two parties control that? I can envision they can't. half the Senate being, being independent. Now how do the parties can control that? And, and that's know, and where real change starts, Michael. That, that is where real change starts. So, you know, I had a conversation with a bright young man here in Texas, and, you know, he's kind of stuck in the vortex, Lou, that, that we've all been. It's like, well, you know, if, if I don't vote for John Cornyn, who's the Republican established senator here, that means a Democrat gets in. I said, but he's no different. He's no different. He's allowed our nation to get where it's at. He's not in the fight for true Republican principles. What's the difference? Take a chance and vote for a fella or a gal who really, really seems to be principled and believes what you believe. Because if we don't change that whole mindset, Lou, that I'm going to have a Democrat in there instead, then it's not going to happen. Because really, as an independent comes through, Lou, the Democratic Party is just as great a risk as the Republican Party is. And I think we have to stop living our election process in fear and really vote for the person that means exactly how we stand. Bingo, Michael. And, uh, yeah. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have X on the line. I want to talk a little bit more about the philosophy of a free market system. We'll be back. The answer you're looking for yeah, lies right. Audible class? Then you're looking for Sanity Check Saturday mornings on 94.3 FM, The Talker. So listen to the word I say. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're back. 94.3 FM, the talker, sanity check, libertarian, Lou, Tea Party Mike. We have Mr. X on the phone. And I got to say, we say it all the time. Don't listen to a word we say. Do your own research. X, this past week, I I, I had an opportunity to talk to one of our subscribers and uh, self-proclaimed liberal. And it's nice. It's nice to be able to have a conversation in ways that we could talk about uh, our philosophies and 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 for me that's the way we start m- moving moving the target or or at least opening discussion and Michael and and certainly Mr X what we what we've said is is we've been proud about what we've done with our newspaper because that gives us this opportunity but one of the discussions that came up and, and then I'm going to let you guys take over on this a little bit was Having been being a liberal, one of the things that was brought up was, yeah, but we have government, and it's great that we have airbags. And I said, well, if we had just had a real free market, if Toyota, if if the public, if if the buying public demands airbags, and Toyota was the only company that put airbags in then the rest of them would go out of business. 
only because it's a free market system. And, 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 and that, to me, is what we really need. It's, it's not about putting more laws on the books for government to force their way into people's lives or force change. But if we had a real free market system, and that's something Michael and certainly X, both of you guys could talk to, only because once things change, once, once, once our legislature or once our, our corporations have, could rely on just putting bills in to promote their product as opposed to building a better mousetrap, then we get to crony capitalism and we start running into the problems that we have. So, Mr. X, good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, uh, morning. just a thing before we start, I just wanted to hit on everyone should go and Google Syrian false flag. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this past week, uh, the government, I'm sorry, the government of Turkey uh, tried to shut down Twitter yep. and YouTube videos because they caught or somebody posted the prime minister of Turkey and his cabinet members talking about blowing up one of their own mosques as an excuse so that mm-hmm. they can do action in Syria. Now, mm-hmm. it, this is the type of thing that we've been talking about since the get-go, since the beginning of this radio, since the beginning of the paper. The fact that governments manipulate the public into thinking that somebody's out to get them so that they can gain and consolidate political power. Yeah, um, yeah you know, we, we I, I was just thinking here, X, and uh, we talked about the Operation Mockingbird, which we've certainly brought up, and, and, and how the media is bought by the CIA and, and used by the CIA to promote their agenda, and, and the whole Syrian thing. I mean, we, we did a whole piece on that back in July, August. Well, that was actually September when we went down and interviewed uh, people from from Allentown, the largest Christian uh, Syrian community in the United States, and then you start hearing different stories. And and X, you're absolutely right about that. Is is that we do have these false flags, and we have talked about false flags and why it is so 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 important to have a free and independent press. And 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 I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to be shameless about this. As we grow, we need people's help out there. And and then I I think. You have to start making choices. Is it is it about supporting a candidate or supporting ways to change our system? And and we're giving people an avenue to change that system. But you know, we need help to grow. That's that's that, there's my plug. <laughs> well, and and think about it. Remember, you know, if the t- tobacco lobby is going to spend a whole bunch of money to try to convince people that t- smoking isn't bad. What makes you think that political parties aren't spending a whole bunch of money in propaganda to convince you that what they're doing is always the best thing, when in reality it could be the most harmful thing? So, you know, this idea that somehow people in business are worse ethically than those in government, you need to realize that those in business only have a limited sphere of influence. You know, if it's the oil companies, they only are in the oil market. But if you get the wrong person in Congress or in the Senate or in your local government, they control more than those industries that are always being railed against, big pharma, big tobacco, big whatever. Uh, The politicians are worse because they have dominion over all of those industries, and that's where the danger comes in. And and that is absolutely the danger, and that's why we need to really look at the people that we're, we're electing at this point and not just look at you know, parties and, and, and why the system is broken. Michael, you could certainly address the whole pharmaceutical. I mean, you know, for, for maybe I know folks that, that are reg- regulars know that you've been in the pharmaceutical business and you had your own pharmacy uh, almost 20 years and yet you needed to get out of it. And once again, it's because big pharma, the, they're writing the rules, they're writing the laws. And, and like we talked about, whether it's Cartwright or any of our, our local congressmen or senators here, they, they don't have the opportunity. They have to rely on, in probably many cases, the people that are actually writing the laws themselves on how they're going to vote. I mean, we just we, we just talked about that two weeks ago where where Senator Car I, I mean, uh, Congressman Cartwright came back and said, listen, he, he can't, they can't read 2,000 page bills going back to once again. One bill, one subject. And, Michael, why don't don't you address that a little bit? Because certainly that affected you, I mean, directly. 
it, it really did, Lou, you know, and certainly God pushes us into directions. But because of the lack of free marketplace in pharmacy today, you're seeing independent pharmacists dropping out. And yet the polls tell us that almost 80% of the people would prefer to go to an independent pharmacy than they would a big chain. So why are the independent pharmacies failing? It's simply because of what you just said, Lou. The laws are being addressed that certainly are advantageous to the chain and not to the independent pharmacy. To, you know, at this point in time, to run an independent pharmacy, you need a room full of attorneys to keep you compliant. And, you know, and certainly the, the chains have that in place. You know, just recently, Lou, you saw in the news that one of the big chains had taken all their cigarettes off the shelf. Right. Uh, doing the noble thing. It's not we're going to lose billions of dollars in business, but it's the right thing to do. You know, I looked at my wife and I said, ah, well, I can guarantee you, <laughs> they got the in on this. And there's going to be legislation shortly that's going to demand independent or, or pharmacists, pharmacies, that if you want to continue to be a pharmacy, you can no longer sell tobacco products. Sure enough, Lou, what do I hear a month later? There's talk of having such legislation in place. So how does just one entity know way in advance, Lou, that we need to stop these cigarettes for the noble reason, and, and a month later suddenly there's talk of having legislation? It's because if they're bought and paid for. They, 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 they're willing to have big business in bed with big government, Lou. And what does that do? It takes away our free marketplace. You know, you talk, Lou, about airbags. If you can remember years and, I mean, decades ago, there was a car called the Tucker. And the Tucker was far <laughs> advanced. This is back in, I think, the 20s or 30s. Right. Where they actually had seatbelts. And the man ended up being, at least my history tells me, that sabotage up in Washington, where big auto industry had him as being fixing the books as far as stocks, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how Washington works with big government or big business for the favors. And we're constantly seeing this day after day. And, and the pharmacy industry is no exception to this. They are just as bad. And what are we doing now? We're selling medications from big pharma, which I feel are completely harmful to the public on a regular basis. And there's nothing said about it. And yet we have this huge war on drugs in our nation of illicit drugs. And, and there's no better than the drugs that we're selling to our populace, Lou, to the pharmacy industry. And so this is where, as an example, of how fixed, how rigged the system is for big government to succeed through big business. Well, you know, let, let's do this. Let's let's continue this conversation. I just want to play that real qu uh, quick clip that we played before. X, and when we come back, let's let's continue this whole thing about what you just brought up about these false flags. I want to remind people. This is from the Church Commission, Operation Mockingbird, and and this this is congressional hearings. And how do we change things? You're listening to Sanity Check. We'll be right back. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal? We do have people who submit pieces to other to American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in executive session. CBS, uh, we uh, have been contacted by the CIA, as a matter of fact, by the time I became the head of the whole news and public affairs operation in 1954, the ships had been established, and I was told about them and asked if I'd carry on with them. I thought that it was a matter of um, real concern that planted story is intended to serve a national purpose abroad, um, came home and were circulated here and believed here because um, this would mean that the CIA could manipulate the news in the United States by channeling it through some foreign country. Now we're looking at that very carefully. We have quite a lot of detailed information. 
Tea Party Mike, Libertarian Lou. They are Sanity Check. Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM. So you think there's bias in the media? We better wake up, folks. I got to tell you, just listen to Tom Jenkins here, our producer. You know, we have to get off our butts and do something. And and certainly that's what we need to start doing. And, 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 and it starts right here locally. It starts here. Uh, owning and, and, and operating a free and independent press, and uh, we're real proud of that. X, we played that quick clip here from uh, certainly Operation Mockingbird. Exactly, exactly what you're talking about and how dangerous, how dangerous what is going on right now and how important what we're trying to do. And certainly I know other, uh, other um, avenues are trying to do it also, but certainly here in Northeast Pennsylvania, how important what we're trying to do and why we're doing this, Michael X, why we started this going on three years ago. And it is... It, just keep snapping back. Keep reminding people nothing will change until we have a free and independent press and until we have free and equal elections. We cannot. We cannot allow the smuckers of the world and we can't we cannot allow the people in these parties not to stand up to them because then we don't need them there. You know, just because I'm, people sign on to these bills, that doesn't mean anything. Nothing changes. Well, I, Sorry, Again, go ahead, the fact X. that a person is saying that they're, they're, they're voting on legislation that they can't even read, that, that enough <laughs> should be proof, proof positive that everything that they're doing is corrupt. You know, I mean, I remember in school, you know, getting into a problem because I thought I could get the cliff notes and write a book. Report, <laughs> OK, you know, these guys don't even have are reading the cliff notes for what the legislation is, a la. You have to vote on the bill to find out what's in the bill, even though I don't know what's in the bill, but somebody tells me it's good, so I'm going to vote for it. And there's so much in the bills. So why can't no, I, we change this? Why don't we demand, demand? Why can't – I'm hoping – what I'm hoping is is that when, when, when these senators and when these congressmen come to your groups and come to your organizations, that you have – you know, you ask them the tough questions. Stop it already. Why? Why? Why, why don't they take their leadership to task? Because if they don't, we don't need them there. Just because oh, they have an R – sorry, X, go ahead. <laughs> and, and, and this is another proof. Please, 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 everybody needs to understand, I've met a huge number of these politicians on the state, uh, local, and on the national scene. Most of them are no smarter than you. They're just very good speakers and have a very good public presence. Okay, so don't let them fool you. They're not Albert Einstein from around the country, the brightest minds that have gone there. In most cases, a lot of them are psychopaths or sociopaths in nature that crave and desire power because they – their nature is that they want to tell other people what to do. They can't allow others to, to lead their lives in peace. And this is on the left and on the right. It's pervasive. Michael, it is pervasive. It, it really is. You know, X, it's funny that you mentioned the, the intellect, because I just had this very same discussion. You know, we I got an opportunity to get face-to-face -face with Mayor Castro in San Antonio here. And I have to tell you, you know, I'm not to beat the guy up, but I was totally unimpressed. <laughs> you can beat him up. <laughs> Yeah, I could beat him up. It wouldn't take much. But the, uh, but, but the interesting part is when you see him on the TV, X, when you see him in the media, he's bigger than life. And, you know, and, and people really don't get to see, uh, as again, to take the, the, pull the curtain back board to see where the wizard is or was. But it is so important that the point that X is making is that, is that they, they aren't any brighter than, than the folks listening here. As a matter of fact, I believe our listeners, our listeners are more informed than the people who are telling us what to do. So always keep that in mind, that you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these people. Do not let them intimidate you, Lou. Well, I, absolutely. I don't feel intimidated at all. In fact, I, I know, know I know we intimidate them because we even lay out the questions. How how often? I mean, in our newspaper, on the radio show, we actually invite some of these politicians on, and we we let them know what the question is. 
and they still won't come on only because and that's I, I, and you go right down the list whether it's Barletta whether it's Marino whether it's Cartwright whether it's Baker I mean I don't know how many of these these people that I've actually went to and Michael I've told them I said listen this is what we want to talk about think about what you want to say formulate your question we're not here to have ambush journalism what we're saying is we just want to have answers and there are some answers that I understand are going to or questions that are going to be uncomfortable but what what good what good is having these people in office if they don't stand up to leadership whether that's to Boehner whether it's that what you know whether that's to Pelleggi down in 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 Harrisburg I mean, just because people sign on to builds and co-sponsor builds and then they could go out. I mean, I mean, Gary calls in here all the time. Let's start naming names. And I've said that. I've said that about Senator Baker, who's running up here. Yes, she's co-sponsor. Yes, she says that she's for free and equal elections. But it's her party leadership, Smucker, that refuses to even allow this stupid thing out of, out, out of committee. I mean, go ahead, no, it's just proof positive again that the system realizes one thing. We need to have just two parties in place. That way we can just pretend that we're actually doing things uh, and, and as opposed to bringing the public real and lasting change. And the reason why they don't want there to be third parties or independents in an election is it exposes the hypocrisy of both of the parties and how they're operating. It exposes the idea that most of their political power is not gained because they have legitimate individual support from people. It's the coalescing or rounding up of special interest groups and corporate money so that they can corral the public or fool the public into thinking that that's that they're working for the little guy when in reality they're working for big union, big pharma, big this, big that, you know, or some sort of special interest group that now gets a payback, and they get a payback. But the, the individual donut shop owner, the little guy on the street, forget it, man. They're not working for you. They're going to pretend that they are. And this is, this is where we go back to why are there false flags? Why were there the warnings during the church commission? Because they knew that if the press, whether it be the radio or the TV or the newspapers and the CIA is writing columns for them, how easy it is to manipulate the public. So that, you know, when you hear like, so, you know, you read a thing in the newspaper and you're hearing about Ukraine. The United States started the uprising. We were involved in getting this thing going that was over there. This is when we heard the story about the, the State Department official that was using the F-bomb in terms of referring to, you know, what Europe thinks about what's going on. We're behind this. Now, look, Putin has his hand in it, too, but you can't pretend that the United States is not interfering in the internal developments of foreign countries that are completely – there's nothing in the Constitution – or again, nothing in the Constitution that says we have this power or we should be doing this or it recommends we do this. Hey, X, I, I, I want to bring up when you just brought up the uh, Ukraine, uh, I, I, want, I want to let our listeners know that – muckrakernews.com that's muckrakernews.com we just brought in a writer uh, from the Ukraine to write for us uh, and and certainly now we're reaching out with, with, with some of our contacts to start bringing people in from Syria uh, from around from around the from around not only the country but from around the world to write independently for us we we have some great stuff going on so I encourage folks to go to muckraker news and right here in Northeast Pennsylvania have an opportunity to get involved with what we're doing we're excited about what we're doing we really are but we need more help. I, I can't even I can't even tell everybody how many calls that we're getting on a daily basis from around the country, uh, certainly on this custody for cash issue. And and that's something that I'm going to talk about here in the last segment uh, uh, for sure, because that that's pretty important, too. But the whole idea is that you can get involved in, and 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 we're asking you to get involved with what we're doing because we could make real change. You know, we can make real change. And when, when I think of all the craziness that's going on in the world, and, and, and X, you're absolutely right that so much of it is manipulated. And, again, there's no challenges in that manipulation. So that, that's why, like, for the, I think of Lisa Baker. You know, there's, there, Lou, I'm here in Texas not even a year, but I could be here for the next 30 years, and Lisa Baker will still be in office. You know, there, you know, Karen Bogle will still be in office. And that's part of the problem is that, that we get into such a habit of believing that these people have our best interests in mind, and they don't. 
you know, just with Smucker and Freely equal elections. Senator Baker has put her name on it, and yet she has not done one ounce of promoting that particular bill. Right. It's a political move, in my opinion. So if you really, really – to me, if I put my name on a bill and I'm going to co-sponsor it, that means I'm passionate about that. And I'm going to do the best I can to make sure that thing gets out of committee so there can at least be a vote on it. And, and yet she has done nothing to promote that. And it really angers me. It really angers me as a voter. It angers me as an individual that you're going to stand there and put on the big show for everybody to say, look, I'm behind this. You're not, Senator Baker, because if you were, we'd be hearing more about it. And that's really what we had to look each time and say, is this person really representing me? Is this person really in Harrisburg to do what they say they're going to do? If, if the answer is no, it's time to vote somebody else in, though. Yeah, and, and, and we're certainly going to be working anybody that's running unopposed this time. And, and, and as I understand, Senator Baker is one of them, along with Udichak and Pashinsky. And, and there's a number of uh, uh, state representatives, uh, both from, uh, in the Assembly and, and in, the, uh, in the House and in the Senate, that are going to be running unopposed. And we're going to be encouraging people to make sure that there is a choice. We're going to switch topics when we come back. Uh, once again, <laughs> the time is flying by, and, and I want to get as much in as possible. Uh, Michael and X, uh, we're, we're going to be help hosting a, a rally coming up April 26 in Scranton. It's called Protecting Families in Memory of Nancy Schaefer. This past week uh, is the anniversary of her murder. Uh, she was a senator in Georgia. Uh, this is a little bit long clip. It's about four minutes, but I think it's important that uh, we remind people what we're doing. And, and, and what this is all about. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the FBI, the uh, bureaucracies, and, and the court system here in Lackawanna County. Uh, enjoy listening to what uh, Senator N uh, Nancy Schaefer had to say. However, my report is concerned with the children and parents caught up in legal kidnapping. Having worked with probably 300 cases statewide and hundreds and hundreds across the country, and in nearly every state, I am convinced there is no accountability in Child Protective Services. I have come to several conclusions. Two or three are, one, that poor parents, not always, but oftentimes, are targeted to lose their children because they do not have the wherewithal to hire an attorney and fight the system. That caseworkers and social workers are very often guilty of fraud. They withhold and destroy evidence. They fabricate evidence and they seek to terminate parental rights unnecessarily. That the separation of families and the snatching of children is growing as the business grows because state and local governments have grown accustomed to having these taxpayer dollars to balance their ever-growing budgets. That the bureaucracy is huge. Look at who is getting paid. State employees, attorneys, court investigators, guardian ad litems, court personnel and judges. There are psychologists, therapists, psychiatrists, counselors, foster parents, adoptive parents, and on and on. All are looking to the children in state custody to provide job security. That the Adoption and the Safe Families Act set in motion first in 1974 by Walter Mondale and later in 1997 by President Bill Clinton offered cash bonuses to the states for every child they adopted out of foster care. In order to receive the adoption incentive bonuses, local child protective services would need more children. They must have merchandise that sells and they must have plenty so the buyer can choose. Here are a couple of the recommendations on my list call for an independent audit of all state child protective services and for a federal congressional hearing on child protective services. Abolish the federal and state financial incentives that have turned child protective services into a business that separates families for money. I have witnessed such injustice and harm brought to so many families that I am not sure if reform of the system is even possible. The system cannot be trusted. It does not serve the people. It obliterates families and children simply because it has the power to do so. What I have said to you in these few minutes is that we must confront the fraud in Child Protective Services.
Child Protective Services seizes children using the very system that is paid for by the taxpayer who actually believes it is used to protect abused and uh, neglected children. The bureaucracy of workers benefit financially by a system that converts children into cash while destroying their families and their lives. No child who emerges from the system can ever be sound or whole. Many disappear and never are ever heard from again. God will not stand for what is happening to our children and our families. His heart beats for these children. He will lift up the downtrodden. What is happening in America regarding child protective services is a criminal political phenomenon and it must be brought to an end. Please join me in working to help set our children and our families free to whom much is given, much is required. As you pray for this nation, pray for the upcoming election and for our national financial crisis Please pray for our children and for our families. We all must press on and win this race for America. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. The answer you're looking for lies right As we roll down this unfamiliar road And although this wave is stringing us along Just know you're not I'm going to make this place your home. This is your home. 94.3 FM, the talk. You listen to Sanity Check, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. Merchandise that sells children into cash. This is no joke, folks. And just like lag towing, when that happened, when Mark Robbins got his car towed for $250 and when he drove out of that towing company and, 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 and the tie rods were busted up and he questioned why the police... We're questioning him and not the towing company. He stayed on it. We stayed on it. And we're going to continue to stay on this subject because if we allow it to go, and, and, and I know the show comes and goes uh, very quickly each and every week, but if we don't continue to remind people, if we don't continue to write it in the papers, if we don't continue to press and press and press until people start looking and our local media starts looking at it more and more, nothing will change. It'll, it'll just fade off into the night. And, and when we look at lag towing, what happened there, and, and we did press, and, and Mark Robbins pressed, and Wake Up Wilkesbury pressed, and Frank Sorek pressed, and they kept pressing and pressing until the, the major new media, or, or we would call the mainstream media, the, the bigger papers, which one day we will be there. They started writing about it, and now that's how things change, and that's why this is so important. I want to, gi- I want to give you a message from the FBI who called us in, who called us in to their office this past week. And I, I, I can't reveal all the things that we said, but they were very interested in what is happening. This is a quote, and, and they asked that I do repeat this on the radio today and, and let people know People know that are listening here, people that are listening to us, that there is hope. And that individual, the the individual that heads up the FBI said this, corrupt officials are my sworn enemy and everybody that works here feels the same way. I was encouraged from that. I was encouraged from that meeting because if we don't have, if we don't have an investigative body like the FBI that we can trust, then nothing changes there also. So we want to let individuals know that they could come to us. There's other individuals out there that are doing stuff out there. And, and, or go to bring your information to the FBI. If you have real information, um, you, you know, just like us, Michael, as you know, we're, we're buried with people coming to us and, and certainly a lot of other individuals out there are feeling the same way, overwhelmed at times with, with people looking for help, uh, certainly uh, Bruce Levine, and, and, and there's other groups, voices out there. Like Once again, we're talking about uh, our, our rally that's coming up. Jesse Epps, by the way, uh, who was inducted into the Civil Rights Hall of Fame. Um, uh, is going to be attending this rally, and we want to start bringing civil rights groups and start making people aware this is real. I'm telling you right there, this is really real. 
You know, and, and Michael, th- this this past week we had an opportunity. I, I, I we went out and you, you know I talk a lot, Michael, sometimes about you know putting things in the books. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it, it's hard to take that time out and to actually say, wait a minute, you know, uh, we could all find excuses. Everyone, everyone that's listening out there right now are swamped. They're buried. Right now, I could tell you right as, as we're talking, our group is is driving out to uh, Penn State because we're going to uh, we, we're helping sponsor YAL, Young Americans for Liberty. And, and the moment I leave this radio station, I'm going to be heading out there myself and we could all find excuses. But the point here is, is this is that. We have to get involved, and you have opportunities to get involved, and 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 you have other radio shows here on ninety four three. You have the Madeira Show. Call in, start start getting that message out there. People will listen to us, but we have to keep the pressure on. I'm sorry, Michael. We go do. Ahead. We, we do, and, and I want to, want our listeners to think that that you know so many times as individuals we seem we feel like we're so insignificant. But, you know, just out and about with your neighbors and talking about these issues, it's a true way to get the word out. It's not just through the radio show. It's not just through a newspaper or television. It's really talking to your neighbors and keeping them informed of what's going on. And I think, Lou, that could be a powerful tool that we as a nation could use because, you know, I believe back in the 1700s, we didn't have all the media, and yet the word got out. And I want everyone out there, you are significant, and you can make a difference. So always keep that in mind, Lou. We do, Michael. And and uh, once again, what we're saying, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the court system here. And, and yesterday, once again, you know, making that time, I went that a, a woman called pleading for help last week to go down to Northampton County to, to just witness what was going on. I did that yesterday. I left early in the morning and uh, drove down to Easton, Pennsylvania and sat in the courtroom and, 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 and just observed and 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 in that particular instance, I I was totally impressed by the judge himself. Uh, he treated not only pro se litigants with respect, it, uh, all 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 litigants that came before him, he treated with respect. And I was reminded what happened just here. One of the things that that he said, Michael, two of the two of the lawyers had asked to approach the bench, and he said no. He said, if you have something to say, say in an open court. And yet I was in, in court here in Lackawanna County on Wednesday. And the whole, the, for over an hour, or it was right around an hour, they did everything in judges' chambers. And that's Trish Corbett. Judge Trish didn't want, didn't want, didn't want stuff out in the open because she knew I was there. I was sitting there. This is what we're fighting. And unless we start having legislators, they're not going to change themselves. I could go on. I, I could go on all day here, Michael, talking about how the legis- how the judiciary has spoke, has just spoken laws into existence, and 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 the only way it's going to be changed is with strong leadership that comes from a legislative body that is willing to stand up. And, and first understand what's going on and then look for real solutions. That's what we're going to do at this rally. We're going to have people there speaking, talking about solutions of what we should be doing in the courts and not listening to the nonsense that is coming out of the courts. Michael, we're down to the last 32 seconds. As always, God bless all. Here's a quick one, folks. We'll see you next week. God bless.